Good morning, everyone. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Luke, evangelist and physician. And we look forward to having Simon share with us in the homily this morning. We acknowledge that we reside upon Treaty 6 territory, the traditional territory of the Cree peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. May the Creator grant healing and reconciliation to the whole community. My friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord is our light and our life. O oh, come. Let us worship. The Psalm of Invitation. Come, sing to the Holy One. 
Shout for joy to the rock who defends us. Come into the presence with thanksgiving. Raise our voices in joyful hymns. Truly, the Holy One is a great God, supreme above all gods, in whose hands are the ends of the earth and the heights of all the mountains. The sea belongs to God who made it, whose hands formed the dry land. Come, worship, and bow down. Kneel in the presence of our Creator. Truly, truly, our God is the Holy One, whose people we are, all in God's pasture. A reading from the book of Sirach. Honor physicians for their services, for the Lord created them. For their gift of healing comes from the Most High, and they are rewarded by the King. The skill of physicians makes them distinguished, and in the presence of the great, they are admired. The Lord created medicines out of the earth, and the sensible will not despise them. And he gave skill to human beings, that he might be glorified in his marvelous works. By them, the physician heals and takes away pain. The pharmacist makes a mixture from them. God's works will never be finished, and from him, health spreads over all the earth. My child, when you are ill, do not delay, but pray to the Lord, and he will heal you. Give up your faults and direct your hands rightly, and cleanse your heart from all sin. Then give the physician his place, for the Lord created him, do not let him leave you, for you need him. There may come a time when recovery <clears throat> lies in the hands of physicians, for they too pray to the Lord that he will grant them success in diagnosis and in healing for the sake of preserving life. For these words from an ancestor in faith, thanks be to God. Psalm 147. Hallelujah. How good is it to sing praises to our Lord, to our God. How pleasant is it to honor God with praise. The God rebuilds Israel and gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and minds up, binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the number of stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our God and mighty in power. There is no limit to the wisdom of God. God lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the grounds. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Song of Zechariah. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to your father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, 
to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And as he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The gospel of Christ. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts invite your healing presence in our midst, O oh God, transforming us to be instruments of your work in the world. Amen. Here we are on the feast day of St. Luke, the divine physician and evangelist. This is a day that invites us to consider what healing means and how we might move in a direction of healing, not only individually, but also communally in our church and in the world. If there ever was a time that needed healing, it is certainly now. Racial and political tensions are at their highest points in decades. Our relationship with our planet is at a breaking point, and many people's lives have been thrown into chaos by the COVID-19 pandemic. The strange thing is we all seem to be aware of our need for healing, but nobody knows how to get there. Debates still rage about the science of climate change, despite the widespread heat waves, floods, and wildfires. Political polarization continues to increase while well, people are calling for our leaders to bring us together to meet our challenging times. Violence between minority groups and those sworn to uphold the law is on the increase, despite widespread cries for social and economic justice. Such times seem to belie the words of Jesus in today's gospel that release for the captives, recovery for sight of the blind, and the oppressed going free is fulfilled among us. If these things are fulfilled, many today don't see it. Such people might, in contrast, want to recite the words of the psalm, O Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked exalt? They pour out their arrogant words, all the evildoers boast. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They kill the widow and the stranger. They murder the orphan and they say, the Lord does not see, the God of Jacob does not perceive. Such might be a psalm for our times. Perhaps it is a psalm for our times because we know what justice ought to look like. We therefore know inequality when we see it. 
when we ourselves experienced it. Our times are indeed full of brokenness and we ourselves can feel powerless to change any of it. Yes, we can vote, we can participate in protests, we can do our part to, re to reduce our fossil fuel use and we can contribute money to medical research. But we can also ask ourselves, is it enough? Will all these small contributions do what is needed, especially when our times seem so desperate? We can console ourselves by saying things like, every little effort helps, we just need everyone to do their part. These are easy things to say and believe. But when there is conflict at every turn, when we even disagree over how we recognize truth when we see it, it can seem impossible to build any sense of forward momentum. Conflict, chaos, and division rule the day, and any who try to insert themselves into it often feel they are torn apart by wolves who feast on anything with which they disagree. In such times, we desperately need a better way. We desperately need to rise above the chaos. We desperately need to demonstrate through our very way of being the way of liberation, healing, compassion, and truth that Jesus proclaims in today's gospel. But how in heaven on earth do we get there? Many, in fact, might throw their hands up quickly in despair. Thankfully, our first reading this morning offers us some clues. Our sisters and brothers in the Eastern Orthodox Christian tradition understand the church as a kind of spiritual hospital. If we adopt their perspective for a moment, we could see the words of Sirach as addressed to us. Honor physicians for their services, for the Lord created them, for their gift of healing comes from the Most High, and they are rewarded by the King. The Lord, the Lord created medicines out of the earth. By them, the physician heals and takes away pain. Anyone who has had any serious encounter with the healthcare system knows these words to be true, but it is debatable as to whether these words could be comprehensively applied to the church. Too often we hear of churches embroiled in scandals, unable to do any good work because of deeply rooted dysfunction, so filled with gossip and infighting that new people rarely darken their doors. Unfortunately, these are too often the realities that come to mind when those outside the church think of organized Christianity. If we in the church therefore believe we are immune from the many spiritual ills challenging our, our times, we are not being honest with ourselves. Yet we have been called to be a hospital to a broken and hurting world, and our faith has given us a way to do this, if only we can embody it. As we think of today's gospel then, it is worth remembering that Jesus' proclamation of his mission came immediately after his 40 days in the wilderness. It is true we commemorate these 40 days during Lent, but when thinking of how Jesus was able to accomplish so much in three short years, we cannot help but remember how he prepared himself for his ministry. We don't know much about these 40 days other than what the gospel writers tell us. We know Jesus did not eat or drink during those days. We know he faced at least three temptations. And we know that afterward he began to proclaim the arrival of God's realm. Somehow those days in the wilderness were pivotal for who Jesus understood himself to be and how he understood his mission in the world. But what was it that enabled him to come out of the wilderness so empowered that he could proclaim healing for the nations and actually bring this about in the lives of those who followed him? I believe Jesus' responses to his temptations are the key here. When tempted to turn stones into bread, Jesus refuses to use his power to, seem to change what seems like a desperate situation. Rather, he trusts God to provide his every need. When tempted to throw himself off a very high mountain so God will prove God is on his side, Jesus chooses instead to trust his deep knowing that he is God's son with whom God is well pleased. When tempted to sell himself to darkness 
so the world will follow him. Jesus instead chooses to trust God, to trust that God will do what God needs to do to transform people through the gospel. Jesus understands his role is limited. By refusing to consent to these temptations, Jesus instead consents to the deeper work that God has committed God's self to do through him. Jesus knows that for God to accomplish God's work, Jesus himself must get out of the way. Jesus is merely the channel through whom God will do God's work. If Jesus were to take ownership of the work God wants to do, as the temptations urge him to, his mission would be doomed to failure. Rather, Jesus creates within himself a wide openness through which God can flow. And it is through this wide openness that he can proclaim, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It is only through this wide openness to God's flow that Jesus can proclaim, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Now, it is possible to say, this is all well and good. This is in fact why we worship Jesus. This is why we understand he is the Messiah come to save us. I agree with this statement. But I also believe Jesus calls us some, to something deeper and far more radical. When Jesus called his disciples, he did not say, believe in me. He also did not say, bow down and worship me. Rather, he said, follow me. This is a radical call, if ever there was one. Because if we take it seriously, it means giving up our desire for power and control. It means understanding that we are only a small part of something much bigger than ourselves. It means consistently consenting to the transforming work of God in us and around us. It means giving up all we think is ours so that, like Jesus, we might have the same wide openness that allows God to work through us in powerful and surprising ways. If we take Jesus' call seriously, it means we let go of our own particular desires for ourselves, for our church, for our country, and for our world, so God can do God's good work in us, through us, and around us, transforming us and our world in the process. This is the healing Jesus invites us as individuals into. This is the healing Jesus invites the world into. Now, lest we think we can now throw up our hands and say, God will do what God will do, we just need to sit back and watch. We also need to recall the image that St. Paul offers us in so many of his letters. We, as followers of Jesus, are now the Christ's physical presence in the world. If we want to see God do God's healing work in our world, it is our responsibility to partner with God to ensure the work is done. As the Roman Catholic philosopher and theologian Ramon Panica writes, the work of Christians is to show the Christ to the world. Because our faith believes that Jesus was fully human and fully God, Jesus shows us how to live to the fullest measure of our humanity. And when we live our humanity to that fullest measure, God is truly in our midst. By letting go of what we think is ours, and by consenting to what is truly ours, the presence of God within us, around us, and through us, that is when the church can be the hospital for the world. That is when we can bring healing to the world, because we ourselves have been healed. We ourselves have been captives released. We ourselves have recovered our sight once blinded. We ourselves have become free of our own self-imposed oppression. Then, and only then, can we say with Jesus, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in our hearing. A number of years ago, a Jewish acquaintance of mine shared an idea from a famous rabbi on Facebook. The idea was something like this. 
When you experience deep brokenness, take consolation. Because it is in your brokenness that you are closest to God. The vessel you once were is no longer able to contain what God wants to do through you. Rather, God wants to remold and reshape you so you can better do the work God intends for you. All you need to do is consent to God's gentle and loving, yet painful work. Our world today is tearing itself apart because of its brokenness. We too are part of that brokenness. But we also have the hope that our loving and gentle God will heal us and free us to do God's good work if only we let go of our own ideas of how we think our lives ought to go. By letting go and by committing ourselves to partner with God in our own healing and in the healing of the world, then we can truly pray the words of today's psalm in prayer paraphrase. God rebuilds that which was once lost. God gathers those who experience exile. God heals the brokenhearted and binds their wounds. God lifts up the lowly and casts the wicked to the ground. Sing music to God with thanksgiving. Make music to our God on the harp. May our thanksgiving be grounded in our own experiences of being healed. And may we bring our experiences of healing to the world around us so, so we too can see parts of Jesus' mission fulfilled within our own lifetimes. Amen. Affirmation. Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. In a world much wearied by strife and suffering, we lean into your mercy, O oh God, trusting that our prayers empowered by your loving grace, have agency to make a difference. Be present now by your spirit as we pray in faith and expectation. We hold in your healing presence the suffering of our world and the places where people are experiencing division, in, division injustice, violence and disaster. For Bangladesh, Yemen, Syria, and Colombia. For southern India, experiencing flooding, and for those fighting the fire on Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, as well as continuing wildfires in California. Let there be support, rescue, and relief to these areas. Let light dispel darkness, compassion ease suffering, and hope dispel fear. God of love, we lift up to your healing power those who suffer pain of body, mind, or spirit with their families, friends, and caregivers. Gloria Abreu, Rebecca Acton, Chris Atkins, Armando Castellano, Gary Compton, Jeff Payton, Kathy R, Bridget Rogers, Greg Vibert, 
encourage and enfold them in your love. May they know the deep peace of Christ. May your wisdom guide physicians, nurses, and those who serve in every aspect of healthcare. We give thanks for family doctors, physiotherapists, dentists, psychotherapists, and all whose skills support and aid us and those we love. For all complementary therapies and those who offer them. For midwives, doulas, and palliative teams. For paramedics and all who serve in emergency services. For all who seek to ease the suffering of others, we give thanks. May they know the deep peace of Christ. We give thanks for the family of your church and for the sacraments which nurture our lives. Today, we lift up to your grace, Rose Mackay, along with her parents, Manda and Jordan, as they present Rose for baptism at St. George's Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Dauphin, Manitoba. Be with Mary and Doug, her loving grandparents, as they support this step from a distance. For all infants and young children and those who care for them, we pray your tender care. May they know the deep peace of Christ. We lift up to your wisdom and grace, our Emmanuel community. In this time of pandemic and transition, asking strength and courage for all engaged in leadership. Let hearts and wills be open to what is true, what is possible, and all that points to wholeness, both for individual members and for the common life we share. And in this process, may we know the deep peace of Christ. Loving God, we give thanks for health restored and prayers answered. We hold in your healing presence and peace those whose needs are not known to us. And we name in our hearts those who are close to us. May they know the deep peace of Christ. God of compassion and love, we offer you all our suffering and pain. Give us strength to bear our weakness, healing even when there is no cure. Peace in the midst of turmoil and love to fill the spaces in our lives. These prayers we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. My friends, we are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Accept, O oh Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, 
the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son Jesus, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame death, for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him, at all times and in all places, give thanks to you in all things. Amen. And now, gathering all our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power, the power and the, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who inspired Luke the physician to proclaim the love and healing power of your Son, give your church by the power of the Spirit and the medicine of the gospel, the same love and power to heal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as we end our time of worship, some of us will move on into the day, some of us will remain and join together in a time of conversation in breakout rooms. But as we go, whatever our day may hold, may the Creator bless you. May God the Son walk with you. May God the Spirit lead you with love. Amen. Amen.